Hey, Don. Don Quinn. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know you were busy. Are you fellas talking business? Well, okay, I, I will sit down for a minute. Look, Don, while you were away, I've been thinking a lot about you. I know it's none of my business, but there's something bothering me. You're a pretty busy guy, and I know you haven't had much time to think about that kid of yours, that Johnny. What I've been thinking is that if you want to get him into a good school, you have to enter him when he's pretty young. Now, I know you know what you're doing, but I just thought that maybe you wouldn't mind the suggestion that you ought to start thinking about it. I know there are a lot of good colleges, but it all depends on your viewpoint which way you want to go. By the way, you think of Yale, Harvard, and Princeton, the Ivy League. And speaking of Ivy, there's a little college in the East that you ought to find out about. I think it's a hell of a place. They seem to know what they're doing. And year after year, they turn out two-fisted kids that have no trouble at all remembering on which side of the water they live. They've got an interesting faculty there. They stand up for their own opinions. Although I must admit, they don't always agree with each other. Gentlemen, I regret that this has been a rather long, drawn-out session, and your restlessness is certainly excusable. However, we have one more item of business on our agenda, and an important one. It concerns the reappointment of Dr. Hall as president. It, uh, it seems to me, as chairman of this board, that Dr. Hall's record is so eminently satisfactory that there can be no serious obstacle in the way of his confirmation. His six years of service has... Uh, uh, Mr. Wellman? Yes. What about Mrs. Hall? Uh, what about Mrs. Hall, Mr. Wellman? Oh, well, I'm nothing against the lady personally, but it seems to me that, I mean, uh, this is hearsay, of course, and I don't ordinarily pay much attention to students. Uh, will you please get to the point, Mr. Wellman, if there is one? There is one. To put it bluntly, there is some doubt in my mind whether a man whose wife is an ex-actress and a musical comedy actress at that is the right woman. I mean, if he is the right man to be president of a college like Ivy, with a conservative oh, tradition... No, no, no. Uh, gentlemen, gentlemen, please, please. Uh, Mr. Merriweather. Mr. Chairman, I'm not an Ivy alumnus. I just happen to be a filthy, rich old man who has dropped some fairly large sums of money on your campus. <laughs> but when I went to a college, which shall be nameless, the Prexy had an old battle axe of a wife. <laughs> Wait a minute, Merriweather. The dignity of this college. Now don't be stuffy, Wellman, if the student body wants to. Gentlemen, gentlemen, order, order, please. May I remind you that the appointing a president of this college is a serious matter, and any pertinent discussions should also be serious. The question of Dr. Hall's fitness and the character of his family must... You see, Don, they're pretty careful. So if you're worrying about your kid, stop worrying. They worry for you. What about those halls, anyway? Toddy. Oh, dear. Must you pace back and forth like that? Like a hyena in a zoo? A hyena? It's a rather rude comparison, Victoria. A hyena is a filthy animal. If we must be zoological, let me be something a little more noble. Uh, a tiger. A lion. That's what you are. The king of beasts. Well, thank you. And like a lion, you must be brave, dear. Now, tell me, how do they notify you that you're to be booked for another term? Booked is hardly the word, Victoria. I am not a juggling act. Well, we all have our professional phrases, dear. Sometimes I think ah, that... The... well, here it is. Timorituris salutami. What does that mean? It means here's mud in your eye from we who are about to be reappointed or not. Latin. Oh, well, let's get it over with. I'll let them in, and you be busily reading your fan mail. Uh, or, or something. Hello, Mrs. Hall. Gee, I'm glad you're home. Can you give me a few minutes? Oh, well, frankly, Pushy, it's rather an awkward time, but what's the trouble? Oh, it's the waltz clog I'm doing in the Junior Follies. I, I can't seem to remember it. Would you, would you brush me up a little? Uh, ask them in, Victoria. Uh, yes, dear. Come in, Pushy. Gee, I'm sorry to bother you all the time, Mrs. Hall, but the way you explain things, the clearest crystal. Then when I get up at, well, when I get up at rehearsal, I, 
Oh, hello, Dr. Hall. Hello, Morgan. Do you bring a message from the Board of Regents? Why, no, sir, I don't. I've been trying to teach Pushy a dance for the Junior Follies, William. A waltz clog. He wants to brush up a bit. Well, I say, Victoria, I don't like to seem stuffy, but do you think that just... Oh, hey, look, Mrs. Hall, if this is inconvenient, I mean, if Dr. Hall is expecting something important... Oh, no, 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 no. Please, go ahead. After all, this is an institution of learning. Am I in the way? Certainly not, dear. Just stand over there by the piano. Pushy has an unfortunate habit of flinging his feet sideways. It makes for a very loose line in the chorus. Now watch, Pushy. Mm, yes, ma'am. Now, you see, Pushy, you don't toss yourself about too much. Contain mm. yourself. Economical movements. Move the shoulders as little as possible. Now try it. See, it sure looks easy when you do it. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, yeah. four. No, five. hold it, Pushy. No, hold it. May I say, Morgan, I don't think you do too badly. Well, oh, thank you, sir. I know I'm no Fred Astaire, but Mrs. Hall is a wonderful teacher. Hey, uh, what was I doing wrong, Mrs. Hall? Your balance is all wrong, Pushy. Now, you must watch how I shift my weight. Uh -huh. Now, oh. here's what you were doing. Oh, oh! I think I see what you mean. Look, uh, more like this, huh? Two, three, 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 three. Ah, now you've got it. That's right, Pushy. Now just practice and practice and practice. And just try to think of your upper body and arms wrapped up like a mummy. Be, 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 be tight. Gee, that does it. I think I know now. Oh, thanks, Mrs. Hall. This is going to be the best show we ever had, Doctor. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing it, Morgan. Are you uh, one of the leads? Oh, he's the lead, William. He sings even better than he dances. I hope. You know, this whole thing scares me to death. When I think of opening night and me doing that waltz clog in front of all these people, well, gee, I, I almost rather be back on Okinawa. Almost, that is. Okinawa? Uh, were you... Yes, he was, dear. Now, you keep practicing, Pushy, and we'll get to work on that third act scenery the day after tomorrow. Okay, and thanks a lot, Mrs. Hall. Gee, with you handling the dances and the scenery and the makeup and the costumes, this thing is really in the bag. Bye, Doctor. Good day, Morgan. Remember, wrapped up like a mummy. I'm sorry I interrupted your question, Toddy, but Pushy doesn't talk much about his war experience. He's got the Medal of Honor, Purple Heart, Silver Star, a few other things, you know. No, no, I didn't know. Uh -huh. I'm glad to hear about it. I'm inclined to lose sight of the fact that these are not all youngsters under my care. When I address the student body or any part of it, I can see how the world has moved since I went to college myself. In my day, we went to college for fun and to fill in a few years between high school and making a living. Some of these young old men have lived more than I ever will. That's why I like my job more than I ever did. Oh, well, it's about time. Shall I accept the reappointment or... Shall we pick apricots? Just play hard to get for 10 or 15 seconds, dear. Then give in gracefully. Dr. Hall's residence. Yes? Oh. Uh, that's quite all right. Not at all. Goodbye. Wrong number. Oh. What time is it? A few minutes after four. Oh, this is unpardonable. The regents know I'm waiting here to receive the news. My appointment or non-appointment is not of such world-shaking importance as to merit this prolonged discussion, except to me. I think I shall go and... No, no, stop pacing, Toddy. Remember, I don't mind ladder. Very well. Lulu. May I call you Lulu? It would be a little presumptuous. You never saw me as Lulu, which you may count among your blessings. I saw you as Mary in Give Them Tears in London. That's all any man could ask. Give Them Tears. Oh, how I should love to play it again. It was a lovely play, wasn't it, darling? If you do do it again, I'd like to play the vicar. I could do it, you know. I saw it 27 times. And bought your own tickets on a professor's salary. <laughs> My sabbatical year turned out to be a theatrical five months. <laughs> a fool and his money rushed in where an angel was standing in the wings uh, to combine a few metaphors. You were very kind to the visiting American, Vicky. The visiting American was very refreshing, Toddy. Oh, it was fun teaching you how many shillings in a pound, how to eat fish and chips, and the Lambeth Walk. Had you noticed me in the audience ever? I mean, before I... 
I think I saw you every time after the first one. And then the night when my maid told me there was a gentleman to see me. If you'll wait here just a moment, sir, I'll see if Miss Cromwell can see you. She don't hardly ever see visitors between tea and curtain time. Well, I promise I won't keep Miss Cromwell but a moment. I'm sorry if I called at a bad time. Oh, that's all right, sir. Anybody that can get past old Arrigan the doorman deserves a bit of a break. How did you manage that, sir? How did I get past the doorman? I don't know. I didn't see any doorman. Oh, well. Uh, just a moment, sir. I'll speak to Miss Cromwell. Dearie, there's a gentleman wants to see you. A yank by the looks of him. What does he want, Penny? I don't know. He didn't say. But he's a pleasant-spoken man and nice-looking. None of the ordinary run of backstages. I'll see him. Miss Cromwell, I realize this is uh, perhaps an imposition, but I'm leaving for the United States in a few days, and I felt I must tell you something. Yes, Mr. Hall? Or is it Professor Hall? Uh, it uh, doesn't matter. What does matter is that I'm not ordinarily much of a theater-goer, but I have seen you in this very beautiful play 26 times. But I would feel that I'd been lacking in simple courtesy had I not told you in person how much genuine pleasure you've given me. The hours I have spent watching you will be a memory which I shall treasure the rest of my somewhat dull life. I'm most grateful. Mr. Hall, I... This is most... Penny, go away. Yes, miss. Please sit down, Mr. Hall. Thank you, but I've been told this is a rather inconvenient time to visit backstage. My ignorance of theatrical procedures... <laughs> Your ignorance of the rules, Mr. Hall, is rather refreshing. And you don't want an autograph photo, or an endorsement of some brand of petrol, or to discuss a tentative new motion picture over champagne. None of those things. No, I merely wish to say thank you. I might also say that dressing room views of one's favorite actress are popularly supposed to be disillusioning. I'm always glad to help kick a superstition in the head. <laughs> I'm glad I'm your favorite actress, Mr. Hall, and you're becoming my favorite audience. Tell me, why did you wait so long to come and tell me these nice things? Well, I... I uh, frankly, I hadn't the courage until tonight. And the thought of going home without hearing you speak to me, in person, was simply intolerable. So, thank you once more. And oh, I... no, no, don't go, Mr. Hall. Sit down again. I want to talk to you some more. Anyone who thinks as highly of me as you do and says so so beautifully is to be a very stimulating conversationalist. <laughs> well, Miss Cromwell, I, I wouldn't have mentioned this, but inasmuch as you have introduced the subject... Well... Now, how would you like it inscribed, Mr. Hall? Oh, just say something like, with kindest regards to... How did you know what I meant? I think because I wanted you to want it. Oh, good, good heavens, I, I'm sorry, I overstayed. What What was that, the curtain time or overture? Or have I... Darling, been... it's the doorbell. What? Well, I, I didn't mean to stay... Howdy! Darling, the doorbell! Answer the doorbell! The, the doorbell? Oh! Oh, yes, yes. Oh, William, I... you were wool gathering. Yes, yes, I... I guess I was. And doesn't wool make a lovely comforter? What on earth are you talking about? Excuse me, dear. I'll see you at the door. Oh, you were just debating about taking a walk. Another ten minutes, we'd probably have been gone. Oh, Victoria, I think you know Mr. Merriweather. Yes, indeed, I do. Good afternoon, Mr. Merriweather. Mrs. Hall, I'm glad to see you. In fact, I'm always glad to oh, see you. Excuse me, Mr. Merriweather, but I'm afraid Mrs. Hall hasn't met Mr. Weldon. Victoria, may I present Mr. Clarence Weldon? How do you do, Mr. Weldon? Mrs. Hall, we haven't met before, formally, but I remember you from 1934, I think, in England, Golders Green... In Lulu's mad moment. 
Uh, was that the one where I played the witch brewing a wicked broth which turned men into frogs? Uh, no, it... no, 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 dear. No, Lulu's mad moment was where you spent most of the second act on a ladder, remember? That was it, the ladder. I'll have to admit, Mrs. Hall, that you were interesting. But that play, how long did it run? Run, Mr. Wellman, is much too vigorous a word. It tottered for three days and fell down dead. I saw it on Wednesday. Oh, then you saw it at its peak. It opened on Tuesday, closed on Thursday. Did you have the good fortune uh, to see Lulu's mad moment, Mr. Merriweather? No, I didn't, Mrs. Hall. But I saw Give Them Tears five times in New York. I went the first time as somebody's guest and four times as lots of people's host. Thank you, Mr. Merriweather. Gad, ma'am, if I'd been a couple of hundred years younger and hadn't a wife who understood me, you'd have found me at the stage door every night with a bunch of emeralds in my hand. Uh, I, I don't like to intrude on your memoirs, gentlemen, but uh, could I serve you any refreshments? You mean tea, Dr. Hall? No, Mr. Wellman, I didn't mean tea. I meant wine, whiskey, gin, or beer. Although tea is available. If you care for it so late in the afternoon. Good man. I'd have a bourbon and branch water, but my medico says no, fussy old fool. Personally, I'm a teetotaler, doctor. I don't approve of drink or of drinking. Well, I'm rarely seen reeling across the campus myself, Mr. Wellman. Could I get you some sherry, Victoria? No, thank you, William. Won't you gentlemen sit down? No, thank you, Mrs. Hall. We're pretty late as it is. Apologies for keeping you waiting, Doctor. Uh, waiting? Uh, for what, Mr. Merriweather? Waiting for what? Don't you realize today is the deadline for your reappointment as president of Ivy, Dr. Hall? Good gracious, so it is. William, did you hear? Yes, yes, I did. Well, I'm glad you weren't brooding about it, Hall. Knew you weren't the type to stew around about it. Right temperament for President of Ivy. Always said so. Well, Clarence, you're the committee. Tell the man. Tell them? Uh, oh, oh, yes, the appointment, yeah. <laughs> well, I suppose it has to be settled sometime, one way or the other. <laughs> Dr. Hall, I have been requested by the Board of Regents to inform you of your reappointment as President of Ivy College for a further term of five years. With more money, too. I'm so... the committee of one, Merriweather. Well, go ahead and commit. Stop stalling around. For a further term of five years, Doctor, with an increase in stipend of $2,500. Thank you, Mr. Wellman. Come on, Clarence. Uh, night, uh, Doctor, and congratulations to you and to the college. Thank you. Night, Mrs. Hall. And thanks for being so kind and patient with my nephew. Your nephew? Pushy Morgan, Stumblebum. You've taught him to know his left foot from his right. Oh. He's crazy about you. I am, too. Uh, come on, Wellman. What are you stalling around for? Oh, good night, Doctor. Good, good night, night, Mrs. Hall. Good night, Mr. Wellman. Good night, good night, night Mr. Merriweather. Congratulations, Doctor. Thank you, Lulu. You may come down from the ladder now. Thank you. Oh, what an afternoon. I promise you I won't go through that again. Oh, won't you, Toddy? Five years isn't so long. Uh, next time I'll be ready for them. I'll be equipped to laugh at them, if you will help me. Well, of course, dear, with what? Teach me that waltz claw. <laughs> I think I might have a flair for that sort of thing. Now, is this the way? <laughs> no, no. No, look, Toddy, it's like this. <laughs> uh. Kind of nice people, those halls, aren't they? They make me wish Sarah was a boy. If I were you, I don't think I'd hesitate very long. I'd like to have my kid with people like that. You know something? That Mrs. Hall kind of appeals to me. So long, kid. Thanks for the use of the hall.